I sent my mum some pictures. It wasn't meant for my mum. It was supposed to be for my girlfriends. Oh, that's bad. It wasn't PG, <laughs> shall I say. It wasn't PG. <gasps> no. What type of pictures are this? This is not appropriate. I would just block my mum from my life. Dyslexia is a learning difficulty that affects my reading and my writing. I've got dyspraxia and dyslexia. Dyspraxia is an issue around movement and coordination. Dyscalculia is a mathematical difficulty. I've got dyslexia, dyscalculia and dyspraxia and they come under the neurodiversity umbrella. This is a dyspraxic in this small of a space. <laughs> <laughs> Action! I've got a Having dyslexia, the words jump quite a lot. So if I get to a train station, I need to look to make sure that's my train at least three times because things are just jumping, I'm very unsure. Trains laid by five minutes. I don't know what five minutes is. I don't understand time. So when it's like five minutes or ten minutes, I might, how might, what does that mean for my journey? And at the airport, it doesn't help that every five second it changes. It's a nightmare. And the writing's tiny. Who's, who's vision's 2020? I think friends and partners can help navigate the world if I was going on a journey, like planning, okay, this is where you're going to get off, you're going to get there at that time, so maybe set an alarm in your phone, you know, if you're going to change trains. So I don't like jump up last minute and I'm like, this is it! Little things like that, that would make like a huge impact. I can't take phone numbers down. Um, when someone's like, this is the phone number, I'm like, what, what are you saying? And then I would write the wrong number down and then probably call the person back and it's probably not this person and it's really awkward. The fact, the figure's just like, it's like the dancing in the air. That's how I can see it sometimes, they're not clear. I can't remember names. So if you've got a massive like name tag on your forehead, I'm sorted, I can't remember names at all. And that's a dis very dyslexic thing. The whole thing about dyspraxia is like movement and like, coordination and I've always been bad at dressing myself. There was one point uh, where I was 18 and I had this dress I used to love and I lent it to a friend and she was like, why'd you wear this as a dress? And I was like, what are you talking about? And she was like, I thought it had like a nice little flap on the side. No, it turns out the flap was an extra leg and I've been putting two legs in one leg hole. Are you, are you sure, Lizzie? <laughs> <laughs> I have really good and bad days, but on a bad day, it feels like I could just, I just want to be in a corner and not talk. I just want to be mute and I get very frustrated when I can't speak. It, it feels like when you have a bad day, everything just shuts off. So when I go food shopping, it's a bit, a bit stressful. I try to bring a shopping list, but that even stresses me out more because I have to like try and find the aisles. I've got to try and find what, like how much money I've got. I get really muddled up with the numbers. So when my boyfriend goes shopping, he's got great patience. For example, I put something in the trolley. He's like, okay, so that's going to be like two pounds. So we put it all in, he calculates it. We work as a team basically. Yeah, he's a great ally. Patience, patience, patience. For me, it's just like patience, understanding and realising that we're human and we're not robots. I came in looking like a potato, now I look like this. A Maris Piper, at least. <laughs> because I'm very blunt in text messaging, people think I'm being rude, but I'm not. It's just the way my brain does things. It's very black and white. Always just talk so much on voice notes. Voice notes are good. Voice notes are my friend because that sometimes text messaging is that when I can't get my point across, voice, voice notes are good. I've got a habit of sending messages to people and then deleting the messages on WhatsApp. No. Well, I've sent my mum messages that won't possibly be for her, they're possibly for my girlfriend, so... <laughs> no! It wasn't PG, shall I say, it wasn't PG. Oh, that stresses me out. <laughs> it's, it's not appropriate to send pictures like this. Only your girlfriend should see you like this or your wife. Was it on text message? It's there forever. So that happens a lot. But now that WhatsApp's got, you can delete videos and voice notes before they read it. What did you delete? I was like, nothing, mum, was it for you? Yeah. <laughs> but I can totally relate because it's it's so hard. Texting's like horrendous. No, no, I would already have to like run away and like change my identity if I did that. I met this lovely guy, Junaid, at a wedding. We started talking and he realised how easily I get overwhelmed and struggle to regulate in an environment. And every like half an hour he was checking in, like, do you want to go outside? Just stand outside for a bit. And it just makes life so much easier and more accessible. I went to the library and I saw a lady keep looking at me and I think she realised that I was a support worker. We just started speaking and I explained to her I did dyslexia and she's like, oh, okay, can I test something out with you? I got a book and she was putting different colours over the writing and she put a red down, she put a purple down, but then she put a green down and the green was perfect. Letters didn't jump, 
and it was just very, very clear. And ever since then, now when I read, I put the green lens over the book and it helps let's not jump. If I'm trying to read something, give me the time to, to read it instead of butting in. I'm really happy that you, you're keen to help me. You know, I'm, I'm 30, I'm grown now, like, I'll ask you for help if I need it. When I first met my manager, I sat down with him and said to him, if I've got five tasks to do, don't throw them all at once. Throw me one task, I'll do that, complete it, send it to you. Manager sometimes says to me, before you send that email, send it over to me so I can proofread it. So that's very supportive that I've got a manager that tends to proofread my writing before I send. Doing job applications are so hard for me. Doing like a video application, I'd be able to, it's a lot faster, I'd know what to say. Ask me how you can support me. Don't just assume because I have dyslexia I'm stupid or because you've know someone's got dyslexia, what you've done for, you, what you've done for that person, that worked. Everyone's very much different. So I think just ask questions and I can tell you how I could be best supported. We're not stupid and I really want people to see what we're really good at. Looking into things a bit more, you know, doing your own research on what dyslexia is and learning that like it's not gonna be the same for everyone, that it is different. Right, that's everything. Yeah. It's a wrap. Thank you so much for watching. It's really hard to live with a non-visible learning difficulty. And what I'd ask is just ask questions. Don't assume, please, just ask us questions and we can tell you the best way to support us. And maybe take the knowledge that you've seen here and just help the people who are struggling around you. That would be great. <laughs>